amazing people. We've got a Jean Tiangle today because the kitchen's a bomb site, but don't tell anyone. In addition to opening yesterday's amazing package, which is a, a little brass thing in a jiggy, we've got some more this morning, which I'm excited to get into. The first one is some new welding gloves. Check these babies out. I dipped my other old horrible tacky ones in oil. Oh, these are a good fit. I, I had to guess which size to get. I think I went just with the large instead of the extra large. The dexterity is amazing. I look like Michael Jackson. <laughs> Second package. Jean-Luc package. Consists of cups, gas lenses, and collets for my WP9 TIG torch. And finally, full bag of rigger gloves. They should last. I've not got much oily work to do now, so I shouldn't be ruining them. Right, took these in the car and off to work. And like that, we're in the car. Let's go. Right, I'm back in the unit, folks. Things are gonna get serious. I've got two tanks tacked up. I'm gonna tack up the other three now, and then I'm gonna try setting up something to either back purge or back off the weld on the outside, and I'm gonna try and start welding these tanks up from the inside, so the good, the good weld beads on the inside. Wish me luck. Really pleased with that run of tax. Moved the torch a little bit quick on one or two of them, like these coming up here, which caused a little bit of straw blue coloured oxidation. But everything else is pretty shiny. Right, I've managed to tack up all of the tanks and I've got one of them hoisted up onto the workbench here. And I'm gonna try and weld it from the inside out and to prevent any sugaring or carbon, carbon up on the outside, you know, uh, any oxidation, I've put that half round scaffold pole that I cut on the back there, and that is clamped and taped all the way across to provide an airtight, a gas tight seal, top and bottom. And then what I've done is set the flow meter, I'll just turn it off now, set the flow meter, on the argon to 10 cubic feet an hour which works out about four liters per minute because it's a metric one we've got that pumping into one end hopefully back purging the whole length of that that seam and then purging out the top side because it's heavier than air and purging out the top at this side so hopefully that will eject all of the air, oxygen, out the back of this seam and allow me to create a lovely looking weld on the back so we won't know until I've done the whole thing. Well I'm kind of impressed with myself. We've frozen the regulator. We've frozen the regulator but I managed to get most of that done in one run. Well I say one run. <laughs> back and forth, back and forth either sides but I just moved one side of the tank to the other and filled it all in. So if I show you the weld seam, put the torch on it, you can see this side, I think it looks pretty neat. What's that there? That might be a little bump. I had a hole blow out there, which I managed to fill, and there. 
So I'll have to obviously test it. And it looks like it's got a bit of a, a rigid, rigid shape, like an angle, not very round. But hopefully I'll get it in the rollers and sort that out. But I'm pretty pleased. I've just got the end pieces to do now. And of course the big reveal to see what the back looks like. Right, we've ripped the back off. And if you have a look, apart from the bluing, you'll see that there's no coking, apart from maybe this end, which is obviously where the end was, where I had to unwrap it, and it's the furthest away. But there is a little bit of pointiness. So I'm just hoping I can run down with the TIG torch and just reflow this these few bits just to take that little ridge out but I think for that section sort of there through there the fit wasn't perfect so so what do I expect working late aren't we Gem so I managed to get it onto the roller again and I think if you look at that for cylindrical profile I think I've taken out the pointy section where the weld was so I think I know what happened, what caused that. Because I laid the tank on its side, the weld was at a 90 degree angle to the, to the workbench. So of course that's gonna put this kind of squeeze on it, which is gonna force the weld out. So next time we need to make sure that the weld profile is the flattest part possible and it doesn't have a have a 90 in it almost so it either needs to be sat on the table which means I need to put the purge bar on the table on the bottom and have everything sat there or it needs to be overhead welding which I ain't good enough to do yet so we're gonna try and reposition the purge bar on the bottom I'm gonna have to leave that on there tonight I managed to get it on but I can't get the bugger off. I have to get it past this big sprocket, you see, when I pull it out, and this is heavy. So we can leave him on there till tomorrow, and uh, I might start work on one of these. Gemma's working till seven o'clock tonight, and I can't go anywhere until she's done, so I may as well tack, tack away. Yeah, I have gone and set up the same way. I'm thinking, because this one's slightly different shape, I have to be dynamic with this. There's no point treating them all as the same because they all came out differently. And I think if I laid this one flat, then the angle would be too steep on this one. As you're looking at it from this side, I could probably get a little bit flatter than it, than it is. So I might just take it a little bit further round, but I'm gonna get it set up perfectly before I start to do anything to it. Second tank complete. Had an absolute mare, massive, massive blowout. Oh, it looks like a bloody dog's bum hole. Most of it's good. It'll clean up. I mean, it will clean up. And uh, I put an extra five amps into it. We've got better penetration this time. And if you look down the length of it, Apart from a little bit of distortion there, but that's from the rolling, it's pretty good. The inside's pretty good too, so I'm chuffed. I'm chuffed with it. The fact that I put an extra five amps on is probably why I had that blowout. I wasn't moving fast enough, and I had to go back over a few other things. Technique, get the technique down, don't rush, because I might have rushed a little bit on that one. But yeah, that's two done. God help me when I have to weld the tops and bottoms on. Really impressed with today, Saturday. Should really have a day off, but I come in. Two tanks welded, three to go, but they're tacked up. And then we've got to start thinking about what's gonna be what. I'm gonna save the best pots for the fermenters, and the other two we'll make a mash tun and a boil kettle out of. Uh, because they're hot side, it doesn't matter if they don't turn out quite as well, or there's a few blobs of not fantastic weld bead or something like that but the fermenters I want them to be as neat as possible 
I could probably get away with just having flat bottoms on the boil kettle and mash tun as well. I'd like to have draining bottoms, you know, conicals, but we'll see if I can roll these cones up on this machine behind me or not. So, do I come in Sunday or do we do something with the family? It depends what the family want to do, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the little soldier. Right, Gem has brought me down a pint of real cider. This is called Gladiator. What's the ABV on it, Gem? 8.4. Are you finished, Mr. Slade? No, I'm just getting 8.4. Oh. I think it's nice. It's fire water. Right, so I'm going to suck this and then we're going home. Do you know what time it is? 8 o'clock. It's really cold in here, isn't it? I can't do it. On that note, we'll see you tomorrow. If I haven't gone over. Shame on you, you macho. Shit, yeah. Yeah.